Debbie Stabenow uh, bragged about her driving a new electric car from Michigan to D.C. in a Marie Antoinette moment that made even the Kellyest greenies gag. Blech. Watch. On the issue of uh, uh, gas prices, after waiting for a long time uh, to have enough chips in this country to finally get my electric vehicle, I got it uh, and drove it from Michigan to here uh, this last weekend and went by every single gas station. It didn't matter how high it was. Is Liberace still alive? <laughs> Sorry. I was laughing all the way to Washington, nibbling my expensive cake, cackling at the poor, starving in the food pantries. Tee hee! What adult. These bubble wrapped rubes should have absolutely no say in the lives of people they're totally removed from and insensitive to. Deb. The average electric vehicle costs 56,000 clams. The median salary of long suffering Michiganders, you mock, 59K. You think every Tom, Dick, and Harbaugh can plunk down almost 60 G's to scoff at the less fortunate like you do? This is why everyone hates Washington. These do gooders think their every move is an act of benevolence, and the federal government needs to force the market to move in some moral direction. Oh, go huff gas, Deb. We don't need mercantilist politicians forcing people to go electric. People are already choosing to buy electric vehicles. When they can afford them, distorting the market because Debbie does Teslas will hardly save the planet. Electric vehicles are great, and people love them. But but people also love CrossFit, and that's just as annoying to listen to. People like Debbie Stabenow don't care how people are suffering, and her solutions are out of reach and beyond insulting to families who are just trying to afford gas and groceries without some authoritarian gas bag deriding them at every painful turn. Remember when Stephen Colbert went on yet another unfunny tear and said he doesn't care if gas goes to 50 in a gallon because he drives a Tesla? Someone needs to drive these condescending kooks to a silent retreat so we don't have to hear them snobbly opine about how much better they are because society is worse off with this kind of thinking. And that's the memo. Mm. Gas prices hitting another high today. The national average now $4.95 a gallon. Remember last year when it was half that, you say? I do. And there's no sign prices are coming down anytime soon. On another note, not only are EVs expensive, they're hard to get. One in 70 of the world's 1.2 billion cars is electric. So why did the tree huggers think we can instantly get off gas? We can't. The main panel is back, Chris Barron, Richard Fowler, and Scott Horton. Uh, so Chris, I will start with you. Uh, what a Marie Antoinette moment for Debbie Stabenow. What do you make of it? It's just insane. I mean, remember, these are the same people who hold themselves out as the champions of the working class. Debbie Stabenow not only is not a champion of the working class, she doesn't know what the working class cares about or needs, and quite frankly, she doesn't give a crap. She's <laughs> fantastic. It's just unbelievable. And to watch the kind of like smug, condescending delivery there, this almost like, imagine being a, a, an average person at home watching that and thinking, that's the answer? The answer is like what your $15 an hour minimum wage is supposed to get me a $60,000 car? Like grow up, get a life people. These people need serious help. Should I get a Rivian or a Tesla? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Richard, we're, we're still on gas. Let's just admit it. Gas is expensive. Not cool, man. Yeah, there's no question that the price of gas is really expensive right now. And I'm not sure that was the best choice of words uh, by Steb Debbie Stabenow uh, in that comment there. I think, you know, she sort of spoke in jest, and I think the jest was too jestly, to be honest with you, Kenneth. Mm, yes. I, uh, I'll, take the, I'll take the term jestly. The judges will allow it. <laughs> uh, so it's interesting because Janet Yellen, before uh, this panel, said, you know, I was really surprised that inflation got as high as it did. But we had supply chain issues. And, you know, it's just it's really hard for people to afford things now. And I didn't see it coming. But it's interesting how Janet Yellen used to chair the Fed, but she doesn't talk about monetary policy very much. Uh, isn't that where a lot of this emanates from? Of course. 
uh, Kennedy, uh, you know, the Fed is always going to blame any kind of supply and demand shift somewhere or a supply chain shift and avoid the root cause, of course, is monetary inflation. Mm -hmm. And they could not even have this massive Leviathan federal government or their murderous world empire without central banking. And then as a result of this inflationary money, we have people thrown out of their houses. They're, you know, working class people who just rent for a living, uh, you know, hourly workers. Their wages are the last thing to catch up with the rising cost of living all over the place. And the economy is just so distorted and regular people just absolutely suffer. Ron Paul was and is right about this. We need a gold standard, 100 percent gold standard as far as any government money is concerned. And then let any other free market competing currencies uh, take place, not be taxed and compete in the market. But the Federal Reserve System must be destroyed before it destroys the United States of America. I don't disagree with you on either of those things. Bring back the gold standard and the Fed. What would happen if we did those two things, Scott? Well, what would happen is we would have a massive correction from the uh, distorted economy that it's been really since Nixon took us off the gold standard half a century ago. And we would have to completely abandon our world empire and have a limited constitutional republic, a humble commercial republic. And then we'd be just fine. As Ronald Reagan's uh, UN ambassador, Gene Kirkpatrick, said, we could be a normal country in a normal time, but we have to give up all this corruption at the heart of it, America's central bank. Yes, the bigger the, the bigger the government gets, the more corrupt it becomes. Man panel, I want to thank you all for being gorgeous and filled with testosterone. Chris, Richard, and Scott, thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Take care, Kennedy. Thank you. And speaking of rich people with electric cars, Tesla CEO Elon Musk today scoring a victory in his battle for Twitter bot transparency. The company has agreed to hand over a fire hose, the public record of every single tweet sent every day. <laughs> Sounds more like a sewage leak to me. <laughs> Could you imagine reading all that drivel? Uh, but they're still withholding a lot of private user data. Will Musk mosey, or is today's news?